He's Singapore's fastest man, holding the national record for the 100 meters. At 40 years old, the former track star still looks as fit and live, a decade after retiring from professional sport. UK Sham says he's been in good health most of his life, but at this age, it was time to take matters into his own hands. And for him, that meant doing a DNA test. When you're at a certain age, it's better to, like, like you said, um, prevent it and preempt anything that may happen rather than take like serious action. I think a lot of us like take our health for granted and we only take like drastic measures when we find out that we have some sort of sickness. DNA carries our genetic code and determines traits from hair colour to health and even our personality. Scientists completed the sequence of the human genome in 2003 laying out the genetic blueprint for how humans develop and function. I find that fascinating uh, because it gives me an opportunity to know more about myself. Uh, we all know that disease evolution is a combination of things. It's a combination of genetics, it's a combination of the environment, and it's a combination of your own behaviours. So there are things that you can do um, to still stay away or sort of prevent to, you know, certain disease uh, development. Genetic testing for paying customers has been available for nearly 10 years. There are a number of uses for it, including parental and forensic testing, gene therapy and genetic genealogy. What's really exciting and happening is the fact that we are using the DNA to determine the sort of drugs that we give, right? So that it's tailor-made. What's available today is really scratching the surface. It's really just the tip of the iceberg. But privacy concerns have discouraged many from testing their DNA. Studies have also shown the healthcare industry is the most vulnerable to cybercrime. And what if employers or insurance companies access your records? The genetic uh, screening industry in Asia is still in its infancy and we, we expect that there will be more rules and regulations that come out in response to the services and products that are popping up in order to protect the, the privacy of the consumers. According to the NIH Genetic Testing Registry, there are 26,000 genetic tests available for more than 5,000 conditions. These include various cancers, autism, diabetes, some forms of heart disease, and even Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Sham, for instance, has chosen to check for inherited heart conditions, and he's nervous about what his DNA may reveal about his health. Emotionally, you might be a bit worried, but I think rationally speaking, it's really the right thing to do. Um, so I think I just bit my tongue and I thought that it's better to just take it. The prospect, prospect of living longer and a good life in terms of quality is probably priceless. It's a fairly straightforward process once you've decided to do that DNA genetic test. You'll have to decide what kind of test you like, whether it's for cancer or congenital uh, disorders or as well as cardiovascular ones. Once you've made that decision, you'll have to fill in a very comprehensive questionnaire. It will involve you answering questions about your family history, your own medical history, as well as answering questions about your lifestyle. Do you smoke? How much alcohol do you drink, for instance, in a week or a month? Once that's done, and that's the most time-consuming part of the process, you have to choose how you want to collect your DNA, whether it's through the buccal swab, and if you've seen enough detective series, you know it involves collecting skin cells from the inside of your cheek, and this is fairly easy. You can even do it yourself. The other method for collecting your DNA sample might be slightly more nerve-wracking for some people. It involves drawing blood. And you can't do this by yourself, so you'll need a nurse to do that for you. But if you're doing a general health screen anyway, it makes sense to collect enough blood to do your DNA testing as well. So now that all your samples have been collected, the doctor will send it off by courier to the US where a lab there will test for your DNA. That will take about three to four weeks and once your results are sent back here, you can sit down with your doctor in your own time and he'll go through the results and answer any questions that you may have. If all this potential doom and gloom isn't for you, non-diagnostic DNA testing is also available for wellness traits that determine fitness, nutrition, and skincare. 
Imaging Labs, customers receive their test kits at home and DNA is collected from saliva. For fitness, we are looking at your predisposition in things like your aerobic potential, whether you are a marathoner or sprinter type of athlete. For skincare, we are looking at 10 traits, for example, collagen breakdown, photosensitivity, photoaging, things that are important for skin health. In terms of nutrition deficiencies, some people have a risk of getting vitamins or mineral deficiency. It's a simple enough test to take, but finding out you have a high chance of developing a serious illness would be harder to swallow. Mm, yeah, I think it would be quite a bit disturbing, but well, I think then you have to see the doctor again and find out how you can make the corresponding changes in terms of like lifestyle or your diet and all that um, and make sure that you stick to it. Uh, but there's nothing better than like being prepared, um, taking maybe like the vit necessary vitamins or changing your diet and all that, yeah. Some have taken more drastic action. Movie star Angelina Jolie decided to remove her breasts and ovaries after a genetic test showed she had a high risk of developing cancers of both. But Dr. Beng says such extreme measures are not always necessary. I think that's an exception rather than a norm. I'm fairly confident that uh, medical science and technology has come such a way that we can confidently turn around and say to you that, look, don't worry. You know, we're going to monitor you, we're going to screen you uh, over the next two, three years, you know, or as often as is required um, to reassure you that you're fine and that you should carry on life as normal. And if you discover, for example, you don't have the gene that gives you the power to be a sprinter, like say Sham, it's not the end of the track for you. Oh, no, no, no. If you don't have that gene, it just means that you have to train differently. You can't train like somebody who, who has that uh, genetic, who, who has won that genetic lottery, for example. Sham was dealt a winning hand in the DNA states. But for most of us, we run with what we've been born with in the best way possible.